Hello everyone, in this video we will be discussing the chapter 3 of ACCF3 Financial Accounting and the chapter's name is Double Entry Bookkeeping. So these are the chapter learning objectives. Take a moment to read them. So these are all the things which we'll be able to learn by the end of this chapter. So let's begin. We'll come back to the flowchart. This chapter introduces you to the nature of business transactions and documentation and how transactions are recorded in the accounting records. Much of the content of this chapter is new. However, it is an important foundation for your future ACCA studies, particularly financial reporting. So in this chapter, we will be seeing how we record a particular transaction whenever a transaction takes place, where do we record it and how do we record it? We'll be doing that. Business transactions and documentation. In every business, a number of transactions and events will take place every day. The role of financial reporting is to effectively measure the effects of those transactions and events, record the effects on the business and summarize those transactions and their consequences in a format that is useful to the user of the financial statements. So the financial statements which we have um, slightly read in the F1 as well are the profit and loss account and the balance sheet, the statement of PNL and the statement of position. So there are particular formats for all of the accounts which we will be learning in this chapter. The main transactions that take place include sales, purchases of goods and of services and payroll related transactions. So don't get scared by um, you know seeing these terms. We'll be able to understand every term in a very easy manner. As we go through the chapter, things will get clearer. In case you had studied commerce in your grade eleventh and grade twelve, then it will be a little bit easy for you. Um, but even if you have not studied it, it will still be okay. I'll try my best to make it easy for you guys. So yeah. So whenever we purchase a book, um, purchase a good or we sell a good that is sales or whenever we purchase a service or you sell or give a service so what do you understand by service let's take an example of a i have a parlor um, business so that is not a product i'm selling that is a service i'm selling right and what are payroll related transactions payroll are giving salaries Others include rental costs, raising finance, repayment of finance, taxation and etc. So these are also the other transactions which we have to be noting down in our formats of the financial accounts. With most transactions, a supporting document will be created to confirm the transaction has taken place. So whatever transaction you are doing, there will be a supporting document but that will be also made along with the transaction which you are taking there will be a supporting document made right so every time a business takes a you know makes a transaction it records it somewhere and keeps it as a proof when the transaction takes place and the associated value of the transaction this documentation is vital to the financial accountant who uses the information on the documents as a data source to initiate the measurement and recording of the transactions so obviously the financial accountant uses this information right the table below summarizes the main types of business documentations and the sources of data for an accounting system together with their content and purpose so now let's um, check what the particular uh, uh, financial you know let's see what the main types of the business documentations are okay so the first one we have is here and that is nothing but quotation so the first one we have is quotation so what is a quotation so what does a quotation really have what is a quote quantity description details of the goods required so in a quotation we quote how much amount of goods we require how much number of goods we required what the um, you know how what kind of a good you need and what is the description of the good so all of this we put it in a quotation so quotation has a quantity description details of the good required and now let's see what the purpose of quotation really is so what is a purpose of quotation 
so when it comes to purpose of quotation we need to think about it so to establish price from various suppliers and cross refer to purchase requisition we'll come to what purchase requisition is if you can recall we have done purchase requisition in the bt exam so why do you need a quotation in the first place so we um, give a quotation to the various different suppliers so that we can see what uh, price the suppliers are willing to supply the goods to us at so quotation is wherein we have the quantity description and the details of whatever good we required and we give it we keep a quotation so that the suppliers can see and we get the best price now let's come to the second one and the second one is a purchase order so what do you understand by a purchase order so purchase order is the details of the supplier example name address quantity description details of the goods required and price terms and conditions of delivery payment etc so purchase order is simple i think this is something which we can read it by the name itself so we have the details of the supplier from whom we are purchasing the goods and so on and how do we pay and everything so what is the purpose so whatever purchase order we have we send it to the supplier as a request for um supply to check to the quotation and delivery note so um whatever purchase order we have we want to purchase something we send the purchase order to the supplier now we have the next one this is nothing but this is the sales and um, this is something which is the opposite of the purchase order so what do you think sales is just pause the video and try to um you know come up with the meaning by yourself and now let's see what sales order is sales order is just the quantity description details of the goods required and price so this is something which is cross checked with the order placed by the customer so sales order so whenever a, pers a person um customer places an order you need to check it with their order and we need to see if it is matching with it right so it is sent to the stores warehouse department for the processing of the order so whatever sales order we have received we send it to the warehouse we send it to the store so that they can you know process and um, like go ahead with the process of the order now let's see what the dispatch note is okay let's just have an overview first we need to do dispatch note good receive note invoice statement credit note debit note remittance advice receipt right this is a very easy basic chapter but then this chapter is what forms the foundation okay now let's see what a dispatch note is so what is a dispatch note what does dispatching mean dispatching means that you are giving away your goods i mean you have deliver you have initiated the pro process of the delivery of the goods so dispatch note means goods dispatched note which is gdn so what do you think uh, a goods dispatched note must be having so a good dispatch note has the details of the supplier name and address quantity and description of the goods and what do you think a dispatch note will show so it is provided by the supplier so the supplier provides the goods dispatch note and checked with the goods received and purchase order so whenever we get a goods dispatch note you check it up with the purchases uh, order and the goods received now we have what a goods received note is now what do you think goods received note will have obviously the quantity and the description of the goods and who gives the goods received note like think about it think about it in a logical manner if i am a business entity and i have placed a purchased order and if i have received the goods that's when i'll send a goods received note right produced by entity receiving the goods as proof of receipt matched with the delivery note and purchase order so you match it with the delivery note and the purchase order now we come to what invoice really is so what do you understand by invoice invoice is the bill right invoice is the name and address of supplier and customer details of goods quantity price value sales tax terms of credit etc so um an invoice is obviously issued by the supplier of the goods as a request for payment so the supplier sends the invoice in order for the us to like pay for whatever we've ordered so um 
for the supplier selling the goods or services this will be treated as a sales invoice for the customer this will be treated as a purchase invoice so if we purchase something and we've uh, we got the invoice it will be a purchase invoice for us but then for the supplier from whom we have bought the goods it will be a sales invoice for them easy i hope you don't have any doubt in any of these uh, so far see it's really simple if you just think about it logically and try to understand what i'm explaining i don't think you'll face any problem okay moving on we come to what a statement really is so what do you understand by the word statement so statement has the details of supplier name and address has details of date invoice numbers and values payments made refunds and amount owing so statement is just something whichever um, refund you need to make or whatever payment someone has made or whatever amount somebody owes all those details are mentioned in the statement so statement is also obviously issued by the supplier right it is checked with other document to ensure that the amount owing is correct so whatever amount you have to take from someone you obviously cross check it from two three places to make sure that that is how it is right now we have what a credit note is okay so now i'm going to mark a star over here because i believe that this is really really important and after we do the credit note i believe that debit note is also very important and then let's see one let's see it one by one so what do you understand by your credit note so what does a credit note really have let's first see details of the supplier name and address contains details of the goods returned example quantity price value sales tax terms of credit issued by the supplier checked with documents regarding goods returned so what is a credit note so when someone when we um when you get some goods delivered by a supplier and you would like to return the goods because they were let's say they were not matching with your expectations or they are of a bad quality or they are uh, not of um, you know in a good manner so you can refund them right so that is when you send a credit note so credit note is something which is issued by the supplier so whenever the goods refunded are received the supplier sends out a credit note and what is a debit note details of the supplier contains details of the goods return and etc issued by the entity who is receiving the goods cross refer to the credit note issued by the supplier so um see debit note is what i send out when i have returned a good when if i am returning a good back to the supplier i send out a debit note but when a, um, when the supplier has received my um, you know returned items then they send out a credit note i hope that's clear let's just revise it quickly once again if i am returning my goods i send out a debit note and when the supplier receives the goods i have returned they send out a credit note now let's come to what a remittance advice is so what do you understand by the word remittance if you can like um, go into the detail and think about it remittance advice method of payment invoice number account number date etc sent to supplier with or notification of payment so what is my account number what is the invoice how have i paid all that comes under the remittance advice and i send it to the supplier what is the receipt receipt is the details of payments received issued by the selling entity indicating the payment is received so um after the remittance advice i'm sending i i the supplier they send a receipt to me so this confirms that they have received my payment so the above list is based upon the documents created by a traditional manufacturing entity not all entities will produce all of these documents in the same manner some entities may produce alternative forms of documentation particularly if they operate in the services industry or overseas so this is just an overview it's not necessary that everybody uh, you know in a way has this so you know what quotation is you know what purchase order is sales order dispatch note goods received note invoice statement credit note debit note remittance advice and receipt okay uh, moving on let's see 
what accounting records really is when the relevant document data source has been received by the financial accountant he or she then needs to make a record of it in an appropriate place in the accounting system however transactions cannot simply be entered into the financial statement for the shareholders there is a complex accounting process that has to take place before the results for the year can be summarized many controls have to be performed to prevent and detect fraud and error before the final results can be prepared the accounting system is also used to monitor the effectiveness of the business and to help conclude relevant transactions for example many goods or services are sold on credit giving the customer number of days or months to settle their debt credit controls required okay now this is something which is a bit essential for you to remember and that is known as credit control we'll come to this okay let's read this para again the whole para the accounting system is also used to monitor the effectiveness of the business and to help conclude relevant transactions for example many goods or services are sold on credit so what do you understand by selling goods on credit when you uh, when we sell goods on credit that means that we are selling something on um, in hindi we say udhar pe bechna so that's something like you are not taking the money right now you are just giving the good for free and on a later date the payment will be made so that means in a way you are just um, giving goods on credit like on a loan and later on they will be giving you the money so giving the customer a number of days or months to settle their debt so like they take the goods on debt credit control requires information from the accounting system with regard to who has not settled their debts and for that reason who needs to be chased for payment so credit control why do we have a credit control we need to have a credit control because we need to see who all has taken our um, goods and who has not paid yet and you need to chase the people who have not paid yet okay now we have the next one the flow of information from the initial transaction to the financial statements is illustrated as follows so what do we have we have data sources when you receive the data sources whatever transaction takes place that is the data so um what do you understand by data sources so data sources is nothing but whenever a transaction takes place so when a transaction takes place that is the data sources then you put it down in the books of prime entry so don't get confused we will be seeing in detail what exactly book of primary control prime entry is we'll see what ledger accounts are we'll see what a trial balance is we'll see what a financial statement is but let's just see the order so first you get a transaction you uh, from the transaction you get the data source when you get the data source the first thing you will do is you are going to put the data in the books of prime entry after putting it in the books of prime entry you put them down in a ledger accounts and after we put it in the ledger account we go to the trial balance and then finally we have the financial statements which is the what we have seen in uh, f1 pnl account and balance sheet right you remember we saw balance sheet also and statement of cash flow so these are the things which is the end game let's say okay now we will be seeing them one by one to begin with let's see what books of prime entry really are so what are books of prime entry the ledger accounts of a business are the main source of information used to prepare the financial statements so in the above uh, flow chart the third one is the ledger accounts so the ledger accounts we will be studying them in detail further so the ledger accounts are the main thing like from that only we make the financial statements but then before coming to the um, stage of the preparing the ledger accounts you need to first prepare the prime entry books right so that's the thing the ledger accounts of a business are the main source of information used to prepare the financial statements however if a business were to update their ledgers each time a transaction occurred the ledger accounts would quickly become cluttered and errors might be made this would also be a very time consuming process 
To avoid this complication, all transactions are initially recorded in a book of prime entry. This is a simple note of transaction, the relevant customer or supplier and the amount of transaction. It is, in a sense, a long list of daily transactions. So you understood the purpose why we don't directly make the ledger accounts because we need to make something in a more simpler, simplified manner and we need to, uh, in order for the ledger account to not be cluttered, we first put the entries in the books of prime entry and then we do it in the ledger accounts. Example, Ford Motor Company, according to the 2011 annual report, Ford sold 5.695 million vehicles in 2011, Ford would need to record 15,603 transactions per day for a full 365 days per year. It was to record every single sale in their accounting ledgers. That does not even take into account their associated purchases and payroll transactions. That is considerable volume of transactions to record in one set accounts. So in order to like deal with these sort of problems, we came to this um, methodology wherein first we sequentially put the transactions in the books of prime entry. I hope you are able to understand the chapter so far. It's not that complicated, but if you still have any doubts, you can put them down in the comment section and I'll try to answer your queries. Right. Now let's see what the several books of prime entry really are, each recording a different type of transaction. So there are various types of books of prime entry, right? So the first one is the sales day book. So, okay, one thing you need to understand before we start with the sales day book, let's start with the cash book. So what is a cash book? What is there in a cash book? So whatever bank transactions take place, whatever big, big cash transactions take place or bank transaction takes place or wherein there is a transaction where checks have, you know, come into consideration, that is all noted down in the cash book. So when I purchase something and cash goes out, I record it in the cash book. Whenever I have made a sales and I've gotten money, listen to me carefully. If I have made a sale and the money has come to me, I record it in the cash book. Don't ask me why it's not in the sales day book. We will come to it. So what did you understand by cash book? You understood that it has cash sales as well as cash purchases right cash sales and cash purchases so these are the thing which are in the cash book now let's come to what uh, sales now let's see what sales day books are so okay now we already know what credit sales are so credit sales is the udhar pe bechna kisi ko koi bhi cheeze. So that means like um, giving someone any of the goods on credit without taking payment for them because they have promised that they will, they will be paying on a future date. So on a sales day book, you record those credit sales, right? So whatever credit sales are in which cash has not been received yet, those are known as the credit sales and they are recorded in the sales day book. In the same way, what is recorded in a purchases day book when we take credit purchases. In the same way, how we give out credit sales, if we take goods on credit from somebody else, they are our purchases, they are our credit purchases, which go into the purchases day book. Now we have what a sales return book is and what a purchase return day book is. So um, whenever we sell something, and if the customer is not satisfied with it um, for whatever reason we have discussed earlier, they will send back the sales. Uh, they will be sending back the product back to us. They will return the sales back to us. So that is known as what? Sales return of goods sold on credit. Sales returns day book. So obviously um, wherever it's on credit, we are ta taking that into the consideration now what is a purchases returns day book return of the goods bought on credit now we saw what cash book is now let's come to what a 
petty cash book is so uh, in a business there are various sorts of transactions wherein cash is involved but it is not the main main uh, like the main daily operating activity of a business for example if i have a business of let's say shoes i have a shoe store i am selling shoes that's my business and in the break time or in the snack time i have a dispensary wherein everyone can take water my staff members can take water and i provide them with tea tea and snacks so tea and snacks is not my um operating business right my business is what my business is of shoes but then i provide tea for my staff so that is something these are petty petty things wherein you have to pay so they all those small cash transactions come into the petty cash book now we come to what a journal is so journal is when all transactions not recorded elsewhere so there might be some transactions which do not come in any of these uh, books of prime entry so such transactions come into the journal so these are what we had seen as the book of prime entry this is the thing isn't that very easy i don't think there's anything confusing so far even if you think something is confusing then let me know and now you understood what credit sales and credit purchases means it means that you have paid you sorry you have taken the goods but you have not paid yet or you have sold the goods and they have not paid yet the sum total of the day's transactions is recorded in the accounting ledgers of the entity this is done in a double entry format this important concept will be explored in greater depth later in this chapter so what is double entry that we will come to it later on um i don't want to confuse you with that we will be doing that uh in detail in the further chapters but let's talk about what double entry really means right now so if i am selling my goods i am okay i have a shop and i sell shoes i am selling my shoes to you so is there a double effect of this transaction let's think about it i am selling the shoes to you shoes are in my stock if i'm giving it to you the stock reduces right the number of shoes left in my showroom reduces but you give me cash right the cash in my showroom increases so when i sell a good to you my cash increases and my goods reduce there has been a double entry right two of my things two of my assets have changed if you think about let's say purchases i am purchasing raw material from somebody raw if when i purchase raw material from somebody the stock of raw material in my inventory increases but i give them cash right so when i give them cash isn't that a double effect two assets are working so there are that is what is known as double entry okay so now let's see what uh, sales and purchases day books are now when you talk about the sales day book we will go into the detail of recording of the transactions in which sales is involved so the sales book summarizes the daily sales made on credit terms the goods are sold and the payment is collected at a later date so the definition of credit sales is given in the bracket and this is what we had been discussing so far so the goods are sold right now but the payment is collected on a later date and what is recorded in the sales book in the sales book uh, the credit sales are recorded always and the cash sales are recorded in the cash books so when you have a um, sales or a purchases which deals with cash in such a situation it is recorded in a cash book we are very clear with that and whenever sales and purchases take place on a credit note then it is recorded in the um, sales book or the purchases book so now let's look at the format of how it looks so the first thing is date then you have invoice invoice is nothing but the bill number so there's nothing to be confused with invoice invoice is just the bill number then we have what a customer is name of the customer and then we have the ledger reference so this is the reference number of the ledger and moving on with that we have what the total amount is 
and now you need to have what the total is of the current date this is the date we have the total of the same so it's date invoice customer ledger reference and so what are these these are all the sales which have been made on a credit note the total sales of the day of 20200 will be entered into the accounting ledgers in the double entry format so when you make this and whatever the total amount is that we have to show it in the double entry we'll look at it in detail now you know what purchases day book is purchases day book is just the opposite of sales even purchases day book records the uh, credit transactions of purchases in the same way like we have discussed of the sales book it is date invoice supplier ledger reference and amount so whatever the total number of purchases is that will also be entered into the accounting ledger in the double entry format so every equation in accountancy has um, two transactions or two uh, ways you need to represent it so it has two entries so that is why we call it as the double entry system now we are done with the sales day book and the purchases day book let's just quickly revise some of the key points so purchases day book and sales day book have the credit purchases and the credit sales right and what is the when if it's not a credit sales or credit purchases and if the settlement takes place in cash right now then that is something which should be recorded in the cash book moving on we have what sales and purchases returns day book is so we had already discussed what returns really is so when you talk about sales returns book and uh, purchases returns book so let's first recall the meaning of what sales returns is so when i sell something to somebody when i make a sale and they are not happy with the product for some reasons valid reasons they give it back to me so the sale which i have made that is coming back to me in the same way when i purchase something and i'm not liking it i'm not happy with it i return it back to the person from whom i bought it that is nothing but a purchases return so that is the same again so whenever you are purchasing from someone you are going to write the name of the supplier and whenever there is a sales return you obviously have to write the name of the customer because they are the ones who are returning the stuff back to us and then like the other tables we have seen like the other accounts we have seen we know that the total is something which will be taken care of the total so that is the most important thing in the question also we will be having to find the um, total okay now let us start with the illustration 1 so giving you a second for you to think about it and try to solve it yourself then we will discuss okay so in this question basically there is mr kipperling so mr kipperling runs a business providing equipment for bakeries he always makes a note of salaries and purchases on credit and associated returns but he is not sure how the transaction should be recorded for the purposes of his accounts so mrs bakewell purchases cake tins at a cost of 500 dollars so who is mrs bakewell mrs bakewell is our customer so they purchase something of uh, rupees this much so where should i record that tell me obviously so i have made a sales for uh, mrs bakewell right so i record that i who am i i am mr kipling i record it in my sales book this is sales okay uh, now we have what mr kipling purchases uh, equipment at a cost of 2000 dollars from wholesaler tin pot so i am purchasing something on uh, from tin pot at a cost of rupees 2000 so what is that so that is nothing but my purchases i write it in my purchases right now mr kipperling returns goods costing 150 dollars to another supplier so i am returning something i had purchased earlier which means it is a purchase return book right so this is a purchases return return i hope my this is a purchase this is return my pen is not working so the 2nd august one is a purchases return i hope you are writing it down along with discussing with me otherwise it won't help you 
3rd August, Jack Flap buys equipment which cost $1,200. So, Jack Flap buys from us, which means it is our sales. Right. So, once again, Jack Flap is nothing but sales. Now, we have um, 3rd August again. Mrs. Bakewell returns $100 goods of the goods supplied to her. So, whatever I have sold, they are returning it back to me, which means it is in the sales return book. Right. So that is what is nothing but sales return book. Sales return. Now let's come to what 4th August is. 4th August is Victoria Sandwich buys a new oven for $4,000. So that is nothing but a sale which we have made, right? Someone has bought something from us. So this is a sales day book. Mr. Kipperling purchases baking trays for 500 from regular suppliers. So this is our um, purchases day book, right? So, of what? $500. This is our purchases. Now, we come to 8th August. Mr. Kipperling purchases ovens costing $10,000 from Hot Stuff Limited. So, this is also one of our purchases. Right. Moving on, we have um, Mr. Kipperling returns equipment costing. So, Mr. Kipperling is me and I am returning something which is purchases return. So, I write it as a purchases return. Moving on. Payval Ova purchases goods costing $2,200. So, Payval Ova purchases goods from us, right? So, that means a sales. Mrs. Bakewell buys some oven proof dishes costing $600. So, that is another of our sales. Write up the following credit transaction arising in the first two weeks of August 2000 uh, X6 into relevant day books. So now we have first discussed each and every transaction in this question and we know now that in which book it has to come. Now how do you make it down into accounts? It's very simple again. In the sales day book you put the name of the person and the amount and then in the end you add in the total and the same way in the sales return book total same way purchases day book and purchases return book. So, we have discussed everything here. You just have to put these down in the accounting format and get the total. I hope that is clear for you. Moving on, let's come to what cash book really is. So, a cash book. All transactions involving cash at bank are recorded in the cash book. Many businesses have two distinct cash books. A cash payment books and a cash receipt books. So, there are two types of uh, cash books. So, the first one is when we are paying cash to somebody else. That means it is a cash payment book. And the second one is when we are receiving the cash. Then that is known as the cash receipts book. A note of cash discounts received. A note of cash discounts received is also recorded in the cash book. This is to facilitate the recording of discounts in both the general and accounts payable ledgers. So, let's read the third point once again. A note of cash discounts received is also recorded in the cash book. So, whatever discounts we are receiving in the form of cash, we record that also in the cash book. This is to facilitate the recording of discounts in both the general and the accounts payable ledgers. It is common for businesses to use a columnar format cash book in order to analyze types of cash payments and receipt. Note that the accounting for discounts is considered more. Okay. So, what are the details of the discount and everything? We will be doing that in the further chapter. Now, we understood what a cash is, cash book really is. Now, let's come to how the cash payments book really is. So, in the screen, we are able to see a cash payments book. So, now let's go into the detail of how a cash payments book really works. The following is a cash payments book. So, first we have the date and then we have the detail. Detail is nothing but the name of the person. Then we have bank, then we have discount, then we have payables and then we have the rent. So, what did you understand by that? The first thing is bank. So, Mr. Ray, we had to give, let's say, um, whatever is given here. So, this is the cash book which is given. So, we have been given the bank details, discount details, payables and the rent. Now, let's read the question. What are the accounting entries arising from the totals in the cash book at the end of the day, assuming the control accounts are kept? So, these are the totals of the um, 
in our cash book so what are the totals all these given are the totals now let's see how we will be doing the journal entries of the following so the first thing we have is let's say so we have payables ledger which is 3210 so what do you understand by payable what is payable payable means it is something we have to give someone right rent is something we have to give someone so whatever is in the bank that is something which has been gotten to us or what is that what do you understand by bank bank so when you're paying to someone the money goes out from the bank only right now let's see what the discount really means so the discount received so now let's see how do we put the entries first of all we have to learn the differences between debit and credit and let's first understand that so there are two types of things in accounts the first thing is debit and the second thing is credit okay now there is something which you must recall and keep it in your mind throughout the time so whenever we have we make a purchases what do you do now ignore this this just ignore this yeah when i purchase something things come in assets come in so which is purchases account debit to cash or bank so what does that mean asset has come in so i have debited it and cash has gone out right when so what happens when you make a sale of something when i make a sale of something my goods are going out and cash is coming in which means cash is coming in cash account debit to sales So these are the two things you need to keep in your mind throughout our journey because this is really extremely essential, right? So we have the question. Now if you recall the question, we have debit payables ledger control account. So because we have to pay something to someone, what will the journal entry be when you're supposed to pay something to someone? Payables account debit to cash goes out, right? to cash or bank anything cash or bank goes out so this is credited but what is debited payables are debited so we are debiting the payables ledger now let's come to rent expense so rent is always our expense right expenses are always debited but let's see how when you pay a rent cash goes out right so rent account debit to cash because cash is going out so what does that mean rent is getting debited now since these two okay wait let me change the color right since this and this are debited you see they are debited here this is debited this is debited but we know that this is credited in cash or bank and this is also credited in cash or bank so the total of the cash and bank we are crediting here right so that is why we are crediting the bank in the question. Hope you understood what I just explained. Now let's talk about how the discount received is recorded. So what has what is given in the discount? So Mr. A has been has a discount. Okay. So this is the cash payments book. So the first thing you need to keep in your mind is the cash payments book. So you know that every transaction in this is something which we have to pay to somebody else, right? So um, cash payment book. Now we, Mr. A, if you see the discount column, you have $100 and in Mr. C, you have 80 So when you are in the cash payments book, so what do you understand by cash payments book? In a cash payments book, the discount is taken by us. So we are the ones who are receiving the discounts. Why? If it was a cash receipt book, I would have been like, this was the discount which we allow to another person. But when it comes to the cash uh, payments book, which means obviously, since we are supposed to pay, the discount, whatever is given, is given to us. So what did you understand by discount uh, received? 
so whenever you receive some discount it is going to be something which is good for you so that will obviously be credited so the um, payables ledger account control account debit to discounts received account so did you understand that what did i say payables ledger account debit to discounts received right moving on even if you're not able to understand this right now that is okay because we will be um doing these in detail in the further chapters okay so now we have what the test your understanding one really is so let's do that the following is the cash receipts book of the SM Art Gallery. So you have the bank receipt, receivables and bank interest. So when you're receiving something, what do you understand by bank interest? Bank interest is something which is uh, given by the bank. This is given by the bank. So what are the accounting entries arising from the totals in the cash book at the end? Right. So, um, try to do it yourself, but I will still explain it to you. So, what did you understand by the following? So, the first thing we have is the bank receipt. So, we have bank account debit to. So, who has given us that? Monet has given bank account received to. So, bank, let me just show it to you again. This would be bank account debit to money bv vog so just like that we have to debit the bank account why because this is something we have received so bank account debit to c monet to interest account to vv gogh to interest account to p picasso so we credit everything else and we debit the bank why because bank is something which we are receiving i hope that's clear and even if it is not clear we will be discussing it further so that's it for this video in the part two we will be doing the further part of the chapter and i know it might be a little bit confusing for you right now but in the further chapters i'll be explaining it to you in a better way so uh, i'll also be making another video in which i'll be explaining how to do the journal entries and the basics of journal entries in case you did not understand this video that is because you might not have had commerce in your 11th grade and 12th grade so for that i'll be making a more basic journal video so i will link the video in the description box below and please make sure to check that out as well if you are not clear and all the playlists are linked in the description box below thank you